Senior East Municipal Assembly, SEMA, is one of the newly created municipalities in the central region. The municipality was carved out of the former Ewutu Senior District in 2012 and established as a municipality. The rationale was to facilitate government's decentralization programs and local governance system. The Ewutu Senior East Municipal is located in the eastern part of the central region. It shares common boundaries with the Gasouth Municipal Assembly to the east. Kaswa is more or less like a dormitory town. Most of the people that work in Accra live in Kaswa. Ewutu Senior District to the north and Gumwa East District to the west and south. The municipality covers a total land area of about 108.004 square kilometers, about 18% of the total area of the central region. Kaswa, the municipal capital, is located to the southeast, about 31 kilometers off Accra. The vision is to become a well-developed municipal assembly that provides and facilitates excellent services to its people to ensure improvement in quality of life of the people. The people of the municipality are mainly Guans, however there are other settler tribes of different ethnic backgrounds. The main languages spoken are Kan and English as official languages in Kaswa. The municipality is very very cosmopolitan. You have every tribe in Africa represented here in Kaswa. And if I, when it comes to West Africa, it is, it is the most representative. And so usually I describe Kaswa as an epitome of West Africa. Kaswa is said to be one of the fastest growing community in the West Africa. We have an average of 80, 80 households moving into Kaswa on a weekly basis. So these 80 households are not people who are on a schedule. Neither are they people who are tourists, who stay for a maximum of a year. There are people who are immigrants, who have come to stay. This fast-growing municipality is virtually a trading hub, as its name connotes. The name Kaswa in Hausa means market. And so the chiefs, who are the owners of the land in Ofako, are such that they are very hospitable. And because of that, everybody else comes in. And anywhere you put a table that you begin to sell, it tends to become a market. In Kaswa, we do not have the sea. We don't have lands and forestry, you know, forestry to be doing lumbering and, if you like, hunting. And even farming. You realize that the farming industry or the agriculture industry has been taken over by the real estate industry. So the major source of livelihood of the people in Kaswa is through trading. So one of the major challenges we've had in terms of socioeconomic uh, uh, livelihood of the people has been that most people gravitate towards the central business district because that's where most people are found. And so you have a lot of workers by the roadside. So in that regard, the assembly had to take steps to curtail that because the reason is that Kaswa, if you, if, you, if you check carefully, you realize that development is far ahead of planning. So the population size and the moving in of people and all that has taken planning policy in Kaswa by surprise. Because you don't have space to even relocate those who sell by the streets. And as an assembly, it's our duty to ensure that people's economic livelihood are sustained. We cannot just go to the roadside and sack people. Because mind you, the people you see on the roadside, some of them, they are capital. And Thai capital is about 500 cities. Some of them even 50 cities. So such a person, if you don't get an alternative location and you ask such a person to leave, what that means is that he's going home to die. But move from here and come here. Relocation is better than sacking. Per our research and certain studies that we did, we realized that during the construction of the Malambi Amansa Highway, the government of the day, that's President Kufo's government, made some payments of compensation for some people to pave way for the construction of the infrastructure. Now, we have come to see that some of the people that were compensated, 
because the extent of the road construction was not up to the extent of the compensation, have come back. So we have spoken to some of them and they left. Some of the places we have found that we have a lot of buffer along the road. Okay, so why don't we come up with this um, um, idea of you know, developing those buffer lands into pedestrian malls and then building retaining walls to separate those activities from the main road so that as people alight from the vehicles and the trotters, they can get into those pedestrian malls and do their trading without we really having to displace people and for that matter, deny them of their, their economic livelihood. And so if you go to the roadside right now, you realize that we are putting on very, very nice, I mean, pedestrian shopping malls. When we also came, we realized that the new market, you know, the entirety of the market was full of shops and, and, and sets. And so because of that, people were forced to come and sit outside the market. The reason is that some of them, their capital will not be enough to even rent a shed. But per the model market that we know in Africa here, you should create an open space where paved, where those petty traders with very little capital can spread their club and then begin to arrange some wares or vegetables for sale. And as I speak to you, if you go to the market right now, you realize that we are paving the entire market. And we have created a space where we are doing pavement bricks to accommodate the women on the roadside and then at the car park. So that when that one is done, we move the women to that paved area. And then the car park that is in the market that has been taken over or colonized by the women will be turned into a transport terminal so that the market will become a daily market. The health of the people is very dear to the managers of this municipality. When I took over office, um, chips compounds within the municipality were for functioning chips compounds. But as I speak to you, it is 24. What we have also done is that we have awarded three different contracts for chips compounds to be built. So when they are completed, in addition to, that, to this, we'll be hovering around uh, 27 chips compound within the uh, municipality. I also have to thank the MP for coming in strongly to support the health sector. In fact, the chips compound at the new market, she's been the force behind it, the expansion of it and all that. Then the MP has also donated an ambulance to the polyclinic. As we speak, I've initiated a um, transformer for the hospital so that they can have access to electricity. And I'm also trying to get them other equipment like beds. They don't have beds for the hospital. And because of that, it's not in, in, in operation. So we are trying to get all these projects for the polyclinic so that they can operate. Under the Ghana-China protocol, the 2 billion high side road protocol, yes, the municipality, under the leadership of His Excellency Nana Ludango Ekufuado, has uh, uh, gotten a municipal hospital. So the officials of Ghana Health and then officials of the company who is to build the municipal hospital came around and we showed them the land. So uh, we have had some benefit there. And then also, um, as part of the interchange project that the SWAL administration undertook, it's a polyclinic that was part of the project. In fact, uh, it is located on the Winnibar Road. I mean, when we came, it was at a substructure level. We have supervised it for, uh, for, uh, to its completion. I have adopted a children's ward. So the health directorate has furnished me with the list of equipment that we need for the children's ward. And the MP has also adopted the female and maternity wards. Education is prime to the MPP government. A government can help create a society of opportunities and empowerment for every citizen. And I know no better way to do so but through access to education. The shortest cut between poverty and success it's through education as well, as noted. So everything, every, I hope every government in this country has tried to do is to improve education. Education is the key to success. We should make sure. And that is why the president has made SHS free. And after the SHS, we should, make sure, we should try to allow our children 
to continue with their education to the university level so that at the end of the day they will become good citizens and be good materials for this country. And this municipality is not left out. In fact, um, since we took over, we have donated over 1,000 blood desks to schools, basic schools within the municipality, about 240 desks to the only community day school, and for that matter, government secondary school in the municipality is the Dupont Senior High School. We got them gadgets for entertainment as well. And we have realized that there's no water in the school. So under the, uh, the, the auspices of the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives, we are in the process of constructing a small town water system to supply water to the students. And then also, uh, there's no toilet facility in the school. So under the, the auspices of the same ministry, Special Development Initiatives, we are constructing a, a 10 unit institutional modern KVIP toilet for the school. The Member of Parliament for the Ubuntu Senior East, a teacher herself, is very interested in moving education forward. And the MP is a superwoman. She's also doing her part, her part so well. And I'm Mr. Akumsin has been supporting the educational sector. I initiated Best Teachers Award in the constituency. So as a teacher by profession, I realized that we need to motivate our teachers. And this is one of the ways I think we should do it. And so last year, I gave them the Best Teachers Award. This year too, we are initiating another one for the teachers in the constituency so that they will know that whatever they are doing for the good people of Aotu Senior East, we, the politicians, all the leaders of the community do appreciate them. So it's a way to motivate the teachers. I also got um, provided the Ghana Education Service with dual decks. We have issues or problems of um, furniture in the schools. So when I went to the schools, I saw that and I decided to get some dual decks for the basic schools and the secondary school as well. I also supplied them with some computers, laptop computers for the education office to also have school buildings. At least we've been able to um, initiate about two school buildings from the SIF. That is one at Presby Busy School and then the new sites at, uh, of our core area. We also have another school building there. When it comes to other infrastructure, as in school building, we go to Gada. The assembly has started the construction of a trade unit where we are going to, uh, as it were, uh, 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 flow it. We want to take advantage of heights because the land is now getting scarcer and scarcer. So we are taking advantage of height. So we are going to flow that particular structure. To, for the Gada um, MA Primary School. When you go to Islamic Research, we have a six-unit classroom block that this administration began and is almost at completion level. When you go to Amuzukope, Real Faith Basic School, when you go to uh, Emmanuel Presby, we have six-unit classroom block which is at the roofing level. When you come to J River, we have another six-unit classroom block which is at the roofing level. When you go to Bentum, we have a six-unit classroom block that has been um, completed and painted. And students are already using that facility. Um, school feeding. When we came, it was only three schools that were benefiting from the school feeding program. But as I speak, all primary schools within the municipality are on board the school feeding program. So it has moved from three schools to 25 schools within the municipality. All of them are benefiting from the school feeding program. And because of that, enrollment has really, really, really increased. And we have had close relationship with the uh, municipal education directorate. The municipal authorities are also improving the road network within the area. When we took over, it was only 10% of the munis municipal town roads that were tapped. The 90% were on tap. 
in terms of roads, it keeps increasing. The demand keeps increasing. Um, from 2017 up to now, we've awarded 23.9 kilometers of town roads. So as I speak to you, some of the contractors are at site. When you get to city, they are, uh, there's a construction of uh, 5.2 kilometers of Kaswa Town Road, that contractor, that's a lot, the lot that that contractor bid and had. So he's on site right now uh, working. And it comes with drains at uh, both sides. We also have a one kilometer CP Link Road, which is under construction. West completion is about 80 to 85 percent. The assembly has also lobbied, and so we're able to have an extra modern bus terminal. Anybody who knows Kaswa will tell you that when you're coming from Accra on your left, realize that there's, there's this mushy area, the central business district. When you're coming from Cape Coast on your right, you realize that there's this mushy area. Before the construction of this project, there was so much flood. When it rains, the whole place was flooded. Passengers could not have access to vehicles. They were virtually using the roadway or the carriageway as lay-by to pick vehicles. In fact, in 2017, if you were going to board vehicle, you, you know, people had to buy polythene bags and put their feet in to be able to trudge through the mud. And then when they got into the vehicles, they removed those polythene bags and dumped them. Because that was how bad the situation was. The project came as a result of the demand for vehicular um, storage at the bus terminal. Hit out to most of the vehicles, almost 10% of the vehicles here were operating under the main carriageway, which, were, which was bringing a lot of congestion within the Kaswa CBD. So the project was conceived, and now we have this place, which is housing all these vehicles, and then the transport operations are currently being effected from this place. When you go around the peak period, you realize that the vehicles or the congestion at the main traffic uh, that runabout has reduced. The construction of the ultramodern bus terminal also came with some ancillary works. And it didn't come alone. The assembly has built an ultramodern fire service station. We have also built an ultramodern police station, also under the flyover, because we, we started getting reports that in the night people were snatching people's bags and phones under the flyover. So we decided strategically to place a police station over there. And then we have also built an ambulance post in that same area. The provision of this ultra modern bus terminal has come as a relief to drivers and commuters. This project has come to alleviate the entire Kaswa people and transport operations from all those kind of, um, of filthy conditions that we were experiencing. Now, I'm going to break my house. By first, I'm going to stay in the house. I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. Stay in the house. The project is uh, substantially completed with over 800 vehicles currently housed here. The authorities are also embarking on annual road maintenance. It is the duty of the assembly to go in the uh, special interventions, remedial measures every year to get the roads, you know, reshaped where they need to be filling down. And then by the next year, you know, with the rains, it will deteriorate again, you do so. Because if you don't do it yearly to, you know, to have serious and dire economic consequences on the, on the But in the whole of Kaswa, we don't have their background. So be there, uh, of our core being our paramancy, we decided to take the, their background there so that they will have a space of doing other activities. And then another issue has to do with security. Due to the cosmopolitan nature of the municipality, there is the emergence of the complex security threat and criminal activities. When we took over in 2017, now, this serious issue of land gas, and that was a major, major security threat. Now, these land gas were not land gas that were demanding for digging fees. They were advanced land gas. When you graded your land, they came for grading fee. When you dug your foundation, they came for digging fee. When you built up to a lentil level, they came for lentil fee. When you roofed, they would be on you for a roofing fee. And when you painted, they would take painting fee. And when we were moving in, they would take moving in fee. What even made us took the bull by the horn was the tragic death of, of, of a trotter driver who happened to pick some people believed to be land gas. And then when they got to their destination, they refused to pay. And when the driver 
resisted that they should pay, they attacked him and killed him. This requires a concerted effort for the municipal authorities to nip in the bud for the inhabitants to live in peace and tranquility. So through the then regional police commander, we instituted the Operation Hit Heart. The divisional commander, district commanders, we came together. We did that. And then per the special intervention of the president, through the IGP, we had this Operation Calm Life also joining us. And at the point, we have to draw on the assistance of less pressured municipalities and districts. Mind you, Kaswa, per the UN standard, the ratio of police to civilian is 1 is to 500. But the last time we sat in music and we checked, one police officer in Kaswa is 2,500 civilians. So we are three times. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the international standard. And because of that, we declared war on land gas. And by the grace of God, by the end of 2017, we had accosted over 250 land gas. As I speak to you, others are in jail because of their activities. And because of that, the situation has come down very, very much. Then, after the incidents of land gas, which has been properly dealt with, we had issues with foreigners, i.e. Nigerians. At the time, we realized that the kind of crime that were coming up were non-traditional Ghanaian crimes, if you like. There were crimes that were imported. You realize that daylight robbery, shooting during the day, and I mean, those things were not... I don't know, it's, not it's not Ghanaian, it's not Ghanaian. It is hard crime. People were shot in the day. And then their belongings were taken. People were attacked, especially these mobile money merchants. And to deal with foreigners, we had to resource the immigration service. So when we came, the immigration service, they were in some dilapidated building in the new market. So we had to get them an ultramodern office, location of three rooms, spacious, get their commander and other officers, and lobby for vehicle for them. And the commander of immigration is a super guy. So he joined forces, and now we started um, checking people's documentations and all of that. And then because of that, the incident of that kind of crime has also gone down. That is how come you realize that today, Kaswa is mostly not in the news for the bad reasons. I mean, two years ago, it was worse. It was bad. So we, we, in terms of security, I think that the Municipal Security Council, i.e. the police, fire service, you know, prisons, migration, PNI. And at a point, we had to get a military representation in our music because the situation was very bad. And by the grace of God, things have normalized. And also with the security aspects, come to the police station, I've built toilet facility, WC, for them, for both male and female. The assembly has also distributed over 1,500 street lights and still counting. Also, I provided street lights for the people of Aotu Senya East to also help in terms of security. Because we know when there are lights available, it's, sometimes it also helps to combat uh, insecurity. Sanitation problems persist even in the face of limited access to health delivery in developing nations such as ours. We have serious sanitation challenge within the municipality. I must put on record that the assembly has its own sets of sweepers that we have rented. And we pay them every weekend to augment the efforts of Zoom Lion. Unfortunately, our lackadaisical attitudes towards sanitation have left us with choked drains and scattered plastic products simmering at many fronts and communities. When I took over as a municipal chief executive, the main streets were dumping grounds for refuse. Clearly, this poses even a graver health hazard to both humans and animals and cannot provide a sustained socio-economic growth. To ensure the accelerated development of Ghana, the MPP party in its 2016 manifesto pledged to fight the sanitation menace in the country. The Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Sanitation 
are working together to try sanitation offenses. People who litter would be tried and punished, and so would those who steal litter bins from our streets. The Ewutu Senior East Municipal Assembly is doing just that. So anybody who has been in Kaswa for the past two years would tell you that at the Bojwase station, in front of First Allied, on the main road, I mean the quota, the asphalt, that was a dumping ground. So the assembly has to get some tax force, and I was the leader of the tax force. And we have to stay overnight to arrest people who dump there. And it will interest you to know that when we conducted that exercise, three nights, we were able to arrest 21 people, including some workers of Zoom Line. We have launched our sanitation tax force together with the office of the uh, NAPCO coordinator. So we have some NAPCO trainees in town. They have been licensed, they have been given ID cards. If they see you, we will take you to court. If you have a store in town and the frontage is faulty, they will charge you. If you have a shop in town and the gutter in front of you is choked, you will be charged. Please, don't let us get into the situation where you will be charged to the court before you come to the assembly for assistance. Keep your corner clean. This person also keeps his corner clean. We are all abide by the bylaws and Kaswa will be a cleaner city. The municipal authority is calling on all and sundry to join hands in the fight. It will take the two of us, you and I, to get our situation rectified. Let that dispose properly. The dust beans that, assembly, that the assembly has provided along the streets are strictly for street refuse. I.e. people are taking pure water, people are, who are eating and can drop light, light refuse in them. They are not for households to pile up their refuse in, 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 in sacks and come and drop them in them. A great deal of work is being done in so many areas in the Uwutu Senya East to set the municipality on the path of sustainable rapid development and growth. It is for you that we are here. Had it not been you, we wouldn't be here. Let us all take notice of this. If there's anything that you don't understand, or you have any issue in your community, the best place to go is the assembly. And that is why we have been trained by the new reform in public sector to be client responsive. So that when you come, your needs are priorities. Gone were the days where the, 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 the assembly, or as it were, the council, was a place where you come and you'll be intimidated. No. It is for you that we are, that's why we are here. So any issue, please don't hesitate to come. And then secondly, we should all try to pay our taxes. We have reports, and if I see the land, if I show you the land laws, request from Land Laws Association for grading of roads, extension of water, even though we are extending throughout the municipality in terms of pipe and water, there are still some communities that need certain amenities. If you don't pay your taxes, i.e. property rates, if you don't pay permits before you build, it will be difficult for us to come in and assist. If you have any evidence that somebody who has been sanctioned by the assembly to come and collect tax for on behalf of the assembly is trying to engage in some kind of connection or fixation or under carbon or trying to cheat you, please don't hesitate to come to the assembly. Don't hesitate to draw our attention so that we can get that issue addressed and meet out the needed punitive measures to that particular officer. It is not expensive to obtain building permits. It's not expensive at all. So you are better off as a citizen of Kaswa to pay your permit before you begin building than to have the task force coming to you. And then I know some of, the some of you, the practice you do is that you settle them. Go and come tomorrow. And when they come, they say, mama, chop money. Hey, mama, chop money. That chop money is more enough to get you your requisite documentation so that you can build in peace. So all these monies, when they come into the coffers of the government, we're able to serve you better. Every market woman, every market person. Mr. Ramu, Obi Biara, and Tia Netwa. So Obi Bawon Chen, say, Asami Nasman is already Jiska. Nessa Wama will take it up, say, any panel you're going for. Don't do. A bicycle biano, or the man, your man, crater. And I said, Obiba, 
na so no di aban sika no a se ni pakono so no nya papa because aban sika ye ndia no ye o fee fixing resolution there was ye jin na ya jiwo i have informed you landlords that come for a copy of our fee fixing resolution so that how much you need to pay for your uh, uh, property rate is known to you so that people don't come and begin to negotiate and bargain with you some of the landlords associations have come we have given copies to assembly members contact your assembly member get a copy do photocopy of the relevant page put paste it in your porch if somebody comes and is demanding taxes compare with what you have from the assembly and see whether it is accurate and i believe that together we can build a better casual